Many years ago, we Rotarians made a promise to the children of the world to rid our planet of the scourge of polio. We keep our promises, and the eradication of polio remains Rotary's highest priority. In order to cross the finish line, we need to remain vigilant. As Rotarians, we need to continue to educate ourselves, our fellow members, and the public on the devastating effects of this virus on children and their families. It's my pleasure to share a special preview of Rotary's documentary, Drop to Zero. It's an in-depth look at the historic effort to eradicate polio. I know you'll find this film as meaningful as I do. Let's take a look. I had a sore throat and a high fever. My dad took me to the doctor and they called my name and I got up and collapsed. And the doctor said, she has polio. Polio has preyed on humanity for thousands of years, moving around the world from person to person in an unbroken chain of infection. In the early 1950s, there was a particularly intense outbreak in the United States that crippled nearly 60,000 people. It was really frightening because there was no vaccine and you never knew who was going to get polio. Everybody knew somebody who had the disease. It's been described as the AIDS of the time. And in the past, precautions are taken to prevent gatherings of youngsters. Parents wouldn't let their children go swimming. Movie theaters were closed. You know, people were kept inside. Nobody knew what was happening. What we know today is that polio is spread by contact with contaminated food, water, or human waste. When the virus multiplies in the intestines, Many children will only suffer from mild flu-like symptoms, but in one in 200 cases, it travels to the spine, attacking nerve cells that control the muscles in the arms and legs, leaving the victim paralyzed. In the worst cases, the victim dies, unable to breathe or swallow. In 1954, at the height of the epidemic, Dr. Jonas Salk tested an injectable vaccine, which offered a first ray of hope. Approximately five years later, Dr. Albert Sabin developed an oral vaccine that was less expensive and easier to use. Humanity finally seemed to be gaining the upper hand. Dr. Salk, you have said that eliminating polio is no longer a scientific problem. I take it you were correctly quoted. Yes, Mr. Spivak. I think that it's a social and economic problem. The uh, problem is not one of vaccine effectiveness, uh, but one of vaccine use. Jonas Salk was right. By 1979, 61 countries had used the two vaccines to eradicate polio including the United States and Canada. But in the rest of the world, we were still seeing 350,000 children paralyzed every year. So that was part of what contributed to the launching of the Global Polio Eradication Initiative, to ensure that every single child benefits from vaccination. No child should have polio. We come to this hour grateful for the achievements of the past. The drive for global eradication came from a most unlikely source. Rotary International, a group of business and professional leaders dedicated to public service, was looking for a global project to celebrate its 75th anniversary. Smallpox had been eradicated just one year before, so we decided to take on polio. It seemed like an impossible dream, 
When we first approached the, the World Health Organization about working with us to eradicate polio, they felt that we were amateurs, we didn't know what we were talking about, that, that we really didn't have anything to bring to the table. So Rotary went it alone, supplying volunteers and vaccines for mass immunization programs around the world. We knew that there was a vaccine that could be uh, easily administered. It could be done by non-professional individuals by just putting two little drops into the child's mouth. From Brazil to El Salvador, from Indonesia to the Ivory Coast. These initial campaigns were remarkably successful. In 1979, we did a huge uh, vaccination program in Philippines, six million children, and we found it worked. And Rotary raised money for further campaigns. They exceeded that goal and raised $119 million, $186 million. Now, the World Health Organization took notice. We went back to them and said, we've raised $248 million. Will you work with us to accomplish this? And at that point, the World Health Organization said, yes. The fact that a volunteer organization can persuade public and private people to join us in this manner, I think, says a great deal uh, for mankind that it can be done. In 1988, the World Health Organization launched a public-private partnership called the Global Polio Eradication Initiative, officially adopting Rotary's dream. Without Rotary International lobbying and pressuring and forcing agencies to talk to each other and governments to talk to agencies, we, we never would have started the Global Polio Eradication Initiative. The United Nations Children's Fund agreed to purchase and distribute vaccines. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control would serve as the program's global virus hunters. You know, if you look at, at what's made a difference in terms of the progress, um, often political commitment is, has been a factor. And Rotary has been key in terms of motivating community leadership, political leadership, to, to, get, you know, to get this job done. The World Health Organization would direct the program's strategy. And Rotary would continue to supply volunteers, raise funds, and act as the program's global advocate. There were many skeptics. The sheer magnitude of vaccinating between 250 million and 400 million children every year, it's mind-boggling. It's the largest global health initiative in history involving more people on the planet than any other initiative. When the program started in 1988, the goal was to eradicate polio by the year 2000. Although the program missed its original deadline, the number of infected countries dropped from 125 to nine. To provide vaccine to remote areas, the polio program has built a globe-spanning network called a cold chain, which keeps the vaccine from spoiling. The cold chain begins with private sector drug companies that supply billions of doses of vaccine to UNICEF, which stockpiles, manages, and transports the vaccine to polio programs around the world. It's very, very difficult at the best of times to be able to reach people consistently every month with a viable vaccine that you've kept at the right temperature and get to every household and reach every child, let alone in areas of civil crisis. This has brought to the fore our need to ensure that we do not become complacent because this is what the virus does. It surprises you. As the global program closes in on the goal of eradicating polio, all the stakes get higher. They'll say, you know, we made a promise to the children of the world. Uh, we haven't delivered yet, and we won't stop until we do. We need each of you to advocate for continued support from government and elected officials, to talk to your fellow club members, family, and friends, 
to ask them to join you in making a financial contribution. Let's not forget that every donation to End Polio Now will be matched two to one by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And finally, please encourage your district leaders to contribute district-designated funds. District-designated fund contributions will be matched one for one by the World Fund. And with a two-to-one Gates Foundation match, contributions of district-designated funds will yield a six-to-one match. These critical funds will save lives. That's our history, our vision, and our legacy. Rotary members had the audacity to start this campaign, and we won't stop until it's done.